The domestication of plants and animals has led to obvious improvements in human lifestyle. The start of agriculture made way for nomads to form villages and in turn form cities. The domestication of animals such as the pig and the cow led to a wholesome diet. Since the dawn of all of this progress came the human tendency to selectively breed the organisms with the more desirable traits. Up until 1865, when Gregor Mendel came up with his theory of inheritance, selective breeding was all accomplished without the knowledge of the existence of genes. All of the breeding was based completely off of individual phenotypes. The 1960s brought an increase in food production that we now coined the Green Revolution, in which time methods such as hybrid breeding, mutation breeding, and chromosome substitutions brought improved select species. However, these methods produce numerous undesired traits, and gene introduction from a distant species is impossible. Genetic engineering technology is the most recent method which produces genetically engineered or transgenic organisms generated by altering the organism's genetic makeup using recombinant DNA. The generation of a transgenic plant was first reported in 1983, which was a tobacco plant expressing the gene encoding for Bacillus thuringiensis, a toxin which was resistant to insect attacks. The traits we desire today are similar to those which our ancestors sought. These traits include pesticide and herbicide resistance, resistance to environmental stress conditions, enhanced yield, improved nutritional value, and improved shelf life. Although tobacco was actually the first transgenic crop, it was the tomato which was the first to be commercially sold. This is not a surprising fact, as this fruit, which is often referred to as a vegetable, is the second most consumed vegetable next to potatoes. The origin of the tomato points to western South America, mainly Peru. When the Spanish arrived in Mexico in 1523, the tomato was already domesticated and being cultivated at the time. In fact, the word tomato is derived from the Spanish word tomate, which in turn is derived from the Mexican Nahuatl name, tomatl. When the Spanish brought the tomato back to Europe, this caused a population bottleneck, which resulted in a small genetic variation of the tomato. The tomato since then has been well studied and is now known to contain 12 chromosomes. The first molecular linkage map of the tomato was published in 1986, and in 1994 the FDA approved the very first transgenic tomato to be sold commercially, which was known as the Flavor Saver Tomato. Normally, the fruit is harvested at the mature green or breaker stage to prevent post-harvest damage. In the time that it takes to ship and sit on the shelves of your local grocery store, the enzyme polyglactaronase begins to break down pectin in the fruit and therefore allows for softening and rotting of the fruit. This is where the flavor saver differs. The flavor saver contains a gene which suppresses the formation of polyglactaronase, or PG for short. The way a gene is suppressed is by use of antisense RNA. The first step in doing so is first of all understanding and studying the genome of the tomato plant. As mentioned before, the tomato's genome has already been largely mapped, and the coding for the enzyme PG is located on chromosome 10 and is known as the TOM6 gene. In order to understand how antisense RNA functions to suppress a gene, Suppose this is the strand for TOM6 on chromosome 10. If the double helix is unwound, you will notice that there is a non-coding strand and a coding or sense strand. It is the sense strand which undergoes transcription, which eventually leads to the translation of the PG enzyme outside of the nucleus. In order to form an antisense RNA strand, the only thing that is needed is the insertion of the same strand except flipped so that the non-coding strand becomes the coding strand. As you can see here, the strands are the same, except that the antisense gene will now be coding for the RNA transcription. From this point, RNA transcription goes unchanged. The sense strand will still code for mRNA responsible for the translation of PG, but the antisense strand has a different tendency. The mRNA coded by the antisense strand has different properties which do not allow it to move out of the nucleus easily. In order for the idea of gene suppression to be effective, the antisense strand needs to produce more mRNA than the sense strand. This is because the strands are complementary on the DNA molecule and therefore will be complementary as RNA as well. The complementary nature of the sense and antisense strands will cause them to bind together and form an RNA-RNA complex. This complex is very unstable and soon falls apart. Not all PG-coding mRNA forms RNA-RNA complexes. 
Despite being outnumbered, some of the sense strand mRNA still manages to leave the nucleus and be translated into proteins in the cytoplasm. This is why the process is known as gene suppression. Of course, before any of this is possible, the gene first must be inserted into the cell. There are several methods in which this can be done, such as biolistics and electroporation, but in the case of the flavor saver, bacterial carriers were used. The most commonly used bacterium for the job is agrobacterium. This soil bacteria infects a wide range of host plants, transferring a gene encoding segment DNA from its plasmid into the plant genome to promote the production of opines, which are nutrients that only the agrobacterium use for survival and reproduction. The bacterium also transfers a phytohormone gene to promote cell proliferation, resulting in a tumor formation known as crown galls. It is this virulent function of the agrobacterium plasmid which is removed and replaced with a gene of interest. The end result is a bacterium which contains a desired gene and is able to transfer the information to a desired plant species. The next step is to obtain isolated tissue of a transformable plant. The tissue is normally composed of immature embryos. The cultivation process places the embryos along with the agrobacterium and is allowed to grow. However, there is a large rate of uninfected plant cells. In order to ensure only desired cells are cultivated, the agrobacterium also carries a gene which encodes for a strain of antibiotic resistance. Therefore, only the transformed cells will survive the medium in which they are cultivated. Fortunately, this process does not need to be repeated for every generation. The genes implanted are heritable to the plant's offspring. The average length of a breeding project, from selection to testing to market, is about 10 to 15 years. In 1987, tomato and tobacco were the only transgenic organisms with a total of about 5 field permits. In 2007, USDA inspected and authorized 671 field release permits with about 102 million hectare acres of transgenic crops planted worldwide. Even so, it is expected that the human population will reach 9.2 billion by the year 2050. To prevent major food scarcity crises, it is estimated that food production will have to be doubled or tripled. Contributions from plant breeding will have to be greater in order to achieve this.